Hello again everyone, and today I'm testing out one of Canon's newer lenses for digital SLRs, the EF 70-200mm f4 L IS USM Mark II. It's for full frame or APS-C digital SLR cameras, but it can also be adapted onto mirrorless cameras. This is the third and most recent of Canon's 70-200mm f4 L lenses. The original, non-image stabilised lens was the first Canon L lens I owned, and I have incredibly fond memories of it. The lens we'll be testing today is the Mark II design of their image stabilised version, and you can tell it apart by its nifty little kink in the zoom ring. And this Mark II version has a number of improvements over the first image stabilised lens. It's meant to have greatly improved image stabilisation, new coatings to reduce flaring, including a fluorine coating on the front glass element to make it easier to clean, and a nine-bladed aperture instead of just eight, which might get you some more interesting sun stars. It also has improved weather sealing, supposedly improved image quality, and it can focus more closely to your subject. Phew, Canon have been busy. It costs 1300 US dollars or 1300 pounds in the UK, so those upgrades had better be the real deal. The best way to think of a telephoto zoom lens like this is to think of a 70 to 200 f2.8, but smaller, lighter, cheaper, and with a darker maximum aperture. F4 is still bright enough to get you noticeably out of focus backgrounds, and shutter speeds just about fast enough for some casual sports photography. Lenses of this kind can give you some really nice images without being too cumbersome to work with. The lens, as I've mentioned, is image stabilised. Here's some footage with stabilisation turned off, and now on to mode 1. It works quite steadily, and as you can hear, it works nice and quietly. Mode 2 allows you to pan more smoothly, and Mode 3 only kicks the stabilisation in when you press the shutter button to help you track more erratically moving subjects, but most of the time you'll want to use Mode 1. The build quality of this camera lens is beautiful to behold, bringing back fond memories to me of the good old days of Canon L lenses being made of metal. It weighs 780 grams, so not too heavy, and it feels perfectly balanced in your hands. It's all based on a metal lens mount, and the inner tube is flocked to reduce flaring from reflections. There's a generous weather sealing gasket there too, and Canon also advertised the lens as having better weather sealing in general than the original, although obviously you still shouldn't take it in a bath with you. Next up is an indent for the optional tripod collar, sold separately, and then comes the rubberized zoom ring. It turns wonderfully smoothly and evenly, without even a hint of stickiness. Then come all the focus and image stabilisation controls, followed by the also rubberized focus ring, which also turns extremely smoothly and can be used at any time. The lens exhibits quite some focus breathing at all ends of the zoom range, zooming in rather a lot as you focus more closely. Well, I'd rather it zoom in than out, I suppose. By the way, I gave my camera sensor a good clean after seeing that footage. The camera's autofocus is very quick, accurate, and makes a quiet whooshing sound in use, as you can see here. It comes with a soft drawstring case, front and rear lens caps, and a lockable lens hood, and its front filter diameter is 72mm wide. Overall, it really is one of the very best of Canon's L lenses to handle, and one of my favourite lenses ever in use. I wish I could afford to buy one just to put on my desk and play with its lovely zoom ring whenever I feel stressed out. Well, moving on quickly, let's look at image quality. I've adapted the lens onto my Sony a7R II here, with its full frame 42 megapixel sensor. These images have no in-camera corrections to them, so you might see a touch more chromatic aberration and vignetting than usual. We'll start at 70mm. With the aperture wide open at f4, we see excellent sharpness and contrast straight away in the middle. The corners look nice and punchy too, although some colour fringing is visible. Stopping down to f5.6 or f8 yields a little extra brightness, but no other real improvements here. The lens stays this sharp down to f22, where softness creeps in due to the physical effects of diffraction. Now let's zoom in halfway to 135mm, 
At f4, the middle of the image looks better than ever, with absolutely perfect image quality. The corners remain sharp, and that colour fringing has cleared up nicely too. Stop down to f5.6 or f8 for tiny improvements in sharpness. And finally, let's zoom all the way in to 200mm. At f4, image quality remains excellent in the middle, and the corners also look fairly sharp, although that chromatic aberration is back for more. At f5.6 it looks the same, but f8 and f11 see tiny improvements in sharpness, bringing you an excellent performance. Overall then, on a high resolution full frame camera, if we leave aside the chromatic aberration which you'll have to correct, the lens is impressively sharp throughout the zoom range, with good contrast. I found this Mark II lens to be just a little sharper at the wider end of the zoom range than when I tested the Mark I version, so there does seem to be a slight optical improvement. Ok, well let's see how the lens can cope on an APS-C camera now, I decided to brutally punish it by adapting it onto my Canon EOS M6 Mark II with its incredibly demanding 32.5 megapixel sensor. At 70mm and f4, image quality is very sharp in the middle, and just ok in the corners. As before, there are tiny improvements when you stop down to f5.6 or f8. If you stop down only to f11 this time, then diffraction will begin to soften your image, and that's always the case on a camera with a sensor of this high resolution. Well, let's zoom in halfway to 135mm. From f4, the middle of the image looks really excellent, and the corners look a little better than at 70mm. The image quality in those corners does not improve at all when you stop down. And finally, let's zoom all the way in to 200mm. At f4, image quality in the middle is just ok, with a slight softness and low contrast. The corners are a bit soft, and again, they don't improve at all on stopping down, unfortunately. Well, as I mentioned, the sensor on any 32.5 megapixel APS-C camera is extremely demanding. This 70-200mm lens just about gets away with it by the skin of its teeth, although the performance at 200mm leaves a little to be desired. Let's move on now and look at distortion and vignetting back on a full frame camera. At 70mm we see some noticeable barrel distortion, and just a little vignetting, or darkness in the corners, stop down to f5.6 and they brighten up again. Zoom into 90mm and that distortion straightens out, but we see vignetting getting a little stronger now. 200mm sees pincushion distortion and stronger vignetting at f4, although stop down to f5.6 or f8 to see some brighter corners again. So, overall, just an average performance here, don't forget to leave those image corrections turned on. Let's see about close up image quality, this lens can focus down to 1 meter, nice and closely really, and better than the previous model. At f4, close up image quality sees very poor contrast. At f5.6 you see an improvement, and f8 looks excellent again, so stop down a little if you're shooting very close up. Now let's see how the lens performs against bright lights. We see a fair bit of flaring here, nothing too horrifying though, and it's a big improvement over the Mark I version which was pretty terrible. And finally, bokeh. This lens can get you some nicely out of focus backgrounds if you zoom in a bit to your subject. On the whole, those backgrounds look beautifully soft, but you should be aware that there are brighter aperture lenses out there which are better options for getting a narrow depth of field, if that's your priority. So, overall, this is a very lovely lens indeed. Its build quality is addictively good, and its image quality, while hardly flawless, is nice and solid, it's actually really sharp. I would personally never buy one of these 70-200mm f4 lenses, because I prefer to shoot at brighter apertures, but there is simply no doubt that they are great fun to use, and this one comes highly recommended if you're willing to spend this much money.